um, stream analytics. This is the branding around analytics today. Yeah. The extreme is meant to represent one of the key Vs in big data. Big data is represented by three Vs originally. Now I think there are seven, uh, which is the velocity, volume. Yeah. The key one is velocity. It means the speed at which we are getting data today and the volumes in which they're coming in. There's also veracity. Veracity speaks to how accurate, how clean the data is and so forth. What we're trying to do um, Eclectics, powered by Oracle. Extreme Analytics, we're going to fuel the enterprise transformation. We have a rocket. I think that visual is very clear. This is the beginning of a journey, an analytical journey. This journey is about visualization. It's about taking everything that you've learned today or understood and putting it in a visual. Speed. I talked about velocity, one of the big Vs of big data. Speed. Competitive advantage. This is how you will gain your competition. This is how you gain your competitive advantage. Yeah. We all, anywhere you go today, this is a common mantra. Data has become the new currency. Today, this is what we do. Our traditional use of data is improving operations, whether you're in a contact center, uh, whether you're operationally in a, in a retail outlet, whether you're in insurance, whether you're in banking. A lot of the reporting you do is around uh, the ad hoc reporting looking at turnaround times, KPIs, agency performance, agent performance, and the plethora of 100 to 300 different reporting uh, styles that you have in your respective institutions. If you're in marketing, obviously, we use the data to try and uh, bring in new members, new customers, um, do more targeted, uh, look at sort of doing more targeted marketing. You have obviously the digital space as well. Uh, the digital space is rife with unstructured data which sometimes is very hard to report on uh, if you don't have a way to really analyze it or measure. And all this is, is gearing towards what comes next. Okay? Uh, yes, there's also collaboration, bringing people together, so forth. Performance improvements, uh, how you report to your managers, and so forth. This conversation about data analytics, it's the um, fastest growing area of expertise today. Anywhere you go today, you'll hear Hadoop, you'll hear machine learning, You'll hear Apache Spark, Kafka, data stories. This is the jargon of this industry. Yeah. As eclectics, the first approach we take is, this is number one, data literacy is important. Yeah. Data literacy is a key to success, to any data strategy that you're trying to implement going forward. Yeah. We come in and ensure that this is, is in place so that you can adopt a culture of data literacy. We are Oracle partners, <laughs> and we leverage Oracle uh, Analytics Cloud. It does the heavy lifting. It does all the work. It's a magnificent platform. Why Oracle over anyone else? Two things. We have, been, we have the expertise internally uh, around Oracle products. Second is the ability of their cloud in terms of scaling for the enterprise. It's like no other. The beauty is, if you're a business user sitting in any one of these uh, spaces, we're giving you a solution that requires no coding. You don't need to know Python. You don't need to know R. Yeah. It's simply drag and drop. And you get the information you want in real time. Yeah. Based on the different use cases. Based on the questions that you're trying to solve within your organizations. Yeah. Now, eclectics. This is our process. This is the process we follow to get data insights. Yeah. Step one, business issue understanding. We need to ask questions, objective questions. How do I know, the, how can I measure the number of deals my people are bringing in? How can I figure out why is my churn rate so high? You know, why are the attrition rates at my company so high? All these questions you have, we address them in the business issue understanding. From there, we now go to the data understanding. Data understanding is about now looking at the source of data. With the Oracle platform, we support all sources of data. It doesn't matter, structured and structured, uh, RDBMS, OL, OLTP, and the rest of it. Yeah? We support all of them, Excel, CSV, we can, we can absorb. Yeah? So we look at the formats around it. Uh, we also look at uh, some statistics at this point. 
um, in terms of uh, just to help us understand what we need and what we don't need. Is there missing data? Are there any anomalies? Are there any outliers? Is there anything in our data that would skewer uh, the output of the results we want? That's why we do that. Data preparation. We're going to now clean in the data uh, ETL processes, which is extract, transform, and load, uh, and so forth. Now, this is where we do our, our bit. Our bread and butter is at the analysis and the modeling stage. We develop the model. Yeah. As a software company, we develop the model, and we also develop the APIs to be able to talk to that model. And our respective APIs is what talks to the Oracle platform. This is a validation process for the model. This is the equivalent of a UAT, or user acceptance test, if you, if you want to call it that. And then we move to what everyone cares about, the presentation and visualization phase. Yeah. This is the export to Excel with a lot of graphical, um, rich content, uh, including other uh, modes of uh, presentation. Uh, data preparation. Our data is in a state of array. It's messy. No. ID numbers are wrong. There's exclamation mark in someone's passport number. Uh, you wonder how that happened. You know, it's, it's messy. Now, this is where a lot of my time is spent. And I mean a lot. Like, I do nothing else. Is look at data that just is bad to look at. Oracle Cloud Analytics halves this by 40%. For the system administrators and for all those, all those in compliance and risk, as it was said earlier, there will be no data residency issues because you can have on-premise and you can have cloud. Yeah. You have a choice. If you feel you want the cloud, you can. But we also take it to a new level in that we can anonymize your data. Yeah. You can remove Felix Moulet from the KYC and give him a, a designation like Director X. Yeah? And we would still get the results we want. Our use cases, as I said, a lot of our work is around analysis and modeling. These are the current three use cases we've worked on. Uh, customer segmentation, where we are focused on profitability and affordability, where we look for patterns in behavior and spending. From there, we're able to come up with the cross-sell and upsell matrix. Yeah? It's a model where we'll simply go in, look at your transactional data, yeah? and also incorporate some unstructured information. Yeah. Uh, what we did is we took customer experience. And the, a lot of unstructured data comes from customer experience because the resolution to some of the issues are not necessarily a drop-down menu. It might be free text where someone has said, this is what we did to fix this problem. Yeah. And uh, we have absorbed some of this. And what our model was capable of doing is we're now moving to have the digital assistant talk to a CRM, which talks to a model, yeah. which when anyone asks anything that's unstructured or anything to do with an issue or problem they might be having, the knowledge base, which will be running on a machine learning algorithm, uh, in this case, unsupervised learning, yeah. it'll learn better. It'll, learn the, it'll be able to cluster and understand and um, do decision trees to show uh, how best can we resolve this issue. In short, what I'm saying is that the digital assistant will have some, it will now start growing in intelligence. Yeah. It will not take over the world, it will not replace anyone's job, but it will be bringing an operational efficiency or a new channel resolving issues that wasn't as um, well placed as it has been. Okay. So cross-sell, upsell, uh, what we're saying here is that um, we could do more targeted marketing through artificial intelligence and machine learning be able to get products based on what someone is spending their money on, what works for them. Uh, so you avoid situations of blanket SMSs. Yeah. You can be very specific and very purposeful and about your marketing and so forth. Then uh, this is the one that I find very exciting, which is the fraud detection and prediction. We started with 1 million plus transactions per day, looking for anomalies where there was actually fraud present. We had a success rate of about 40% on that, where actually we simulated a fraudulent transaction and so forth, and we caught about 40% of them. That was a few months back. Now we are 10 million transactions, and the number's gone up to about 60%. Prior to that, we were not using Oracle Analytics. So I'm grateful to Oracle for that 20%. Yeah. And um, 
the last one we've done is the attrition. Why do people leave our organizations? What are the parameters? What are the habits? What are the behaviors? Yeah? Why things aren't working the way they're supposed to? Why are we not making more money? Why are our salespeople not performing? Why is our organization not where it's supposed to be? Yeah. You've been in business 10, 15 years, 20, 35 years. You've stagnated. You've plateaued. Where is this competitive advantage going to come from? If you allow us to get your data right, then you'll have the visuals to be able to understand some of these questions you have. And these questions are endless. Everyone here has a question. Yeah. So all I'm saying is you can find answers faster. Um, you can act on the best information. There's a lot of misinformation. You can collaborate quicker. Performance uh, appraisals can be done in a much shorter time. Reporting is not one week late. You can have it on the fly. Uh, I do need to mention the Oracle mobile app, which is something else. Uh, it actually has a machine learning algorithm within it, and it learns, uh, and can actually help you manage your day better in the work space. Huh? One of the things that we all appreciate, which I mentioned, was mobility, that people want to do transactions by themselves. Speed is of essence, accuracy is of essence, and this is the true test of technology now. We are simply disrupting the way things are done. The guys in the call center will tell you that they have most frequently asked questions are more than 50%. More than 50% of the queries are the same. So technology now comes in to say, why don't you digitize that? Focus on the most complex things. And this is what the robots do. Second, it takes much longer for you to go physically and open an account or present documents and all that for account opening. And customer onboarding is the biggest headache. It doesn't matter whether it's insurance or you are in banking, customer onboarding is very critical. But you cannot grow your numbers unless you have that part. So bringing again technology to address that is one of the focus that we are putting. But bringing a customer on board digital is not enough. For example, you need to onboard to them the service. That's so why we went ahead and said, how do you open an account? And then we tell you, oh, use now exit our platform, go to M-Pesa, put a pay bill. Then you're left with a lot of reconciliation at the back. We have been able to integrate directly so that you're able to fund the account you have opened. If it's insurance, you're able to apply for the service and pay online without exiting the platform. Lastly, is digital. The reason why we have emphasized on security is because we are saying whenever you involve digital end-to-end, -end, what we call straight through, it means a human being has been skipped in the validation of that transaction. Means also fraudsters can take advantage of that if the system is not foolproof. So all emphasis to ensure that not only you're onboarded, not only you're able to do transaction, but as an institution you have dashboards that can tell you preventative first, detective, and then recovery. Those three stages have been taken care of. All emphasis have been put on that. But the last slide that was being said is big data. You've heard everybody saying the future is. What builds AI, artificial intelligence? What is that that is relied on? It's data, isn't it? What builds um, you know, you're calling out machine learning, for example. There must be data. Yeah? Look at everything that we are talking about in the future. And we have been told about connectivity and sharing, which I shared in the morning. Everything must be dependent on data. So we are closely monitoring the general um, data protection rights or regulation that have, you may have seen those on the media, have you? It is acronyms that are coming in saying, how much longer can you hold data? How much accuracy data can you hold? If I walk into a hotel like this, and I sign there, how much can they hold my data? And can they send me SMSs and emails without my authority? The regulation in the banking sector will say seven years. But remember that is a local regulation. Other institutions say you should not hold data. That's personal. And personalized data is where they can be able to trace who I am. And it's my ID, my name, co-joined, 
as well as my email address and so on. But as banks are being now, as data analysts, what we are doing is now we are collecting that data and masking the necessary unnecessary data. And that is obviously if we mask the mobile phone number, we mask the name, we mask the email address. Does if I want to analyze, does my data get affected? I still get the insights, I can still build products tied to to that information. So it's an issue of balancing the two. But I know solutions, if you were to kill data holding, data analytics and so on, and including that you need to delete those records, you don't keep them at all, then new designs, new products will be difficult to build. And those are the ones that are, are helping us come here.